best parties at the Super Bowl. I get invited to some great events. So a lot of people ask me why. A little bit has to do with the fact that I'm enthusiastic about parties. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade, by education also. And so I pay attention to some of the little things and some of the patterns that occur. I also model and also when I get invited to parties, I don't upset the ratio just by bringing all guys. Um, I tend to bring females with. Does that sound bad? I mean, it's just true, so I don't care. This video is going to introduce to you the patterns of some of the best Super Bowl parties. And I'm going to reveal uh, party by party some of the best events that are this year Super Bowl in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is nearly breaking news. The Bud Light Hotel is actually going to be on a boat this year. Now, this Bud Light Hotel piece tidbit of news this is important to understand the accuracy of the video information that I'm going to be revealing. Because if you look at the city, this year we're in San Francisco, buying out an entire hotel the same way that the Bud Light bought the Phoenix Hotel, it's going to be a little different. So that's why this year it's on a boat in the same way that Bud Light did the same thing in New York, and the same thing that Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, did for Dreamforce 2015 is he bought out a boat. I can't stress more the patternistic nature of annualized franchised parties. For example, a creative arts agency last Monday of Sundance, they will do a farewell party that is at Sundance Film Festival and it's a bunch of agents hosting celebs and that's their flagship event for Sundance. At South by Southwest they do the first Sunday during film and interactive. South by Southwest is SXSW. Maxim has a Saturday party the Saturday right before the Super Bowl. So parties are very much patternistic year to year if you study them. To give you some insight into what we do as party planners, or in my case, party hackers uh, and distribution experts in using parties to gain distribution and gain advantage in a very crowded marketplace, party planners will host and predict and plan and uh, engineer and design next year's event literally moments after or even during this year's event where they want to have it planned one year out and one of the things that they do is they game venue selection where the super bowl rotates cities but if the city doesn't rotate you can be sure that these event planners would work with the same exact venue by a flagship event what I mean by that is this is an awesome event that gets associated and linked back to the brand. So let's say the ESPN party that occurs the Friday before the Super Bowl. Uh, they have uh, by nature, by reputation, a great event on Friday. On Saturday, there's a Playboy party. This year it's at San Francisco Giants parking lot, parking lot A. Don't worry, they throw a tent over it. But these flagship events are meant to, to carry your brand and do brand activation. And when you're doing a startup, doing knowledge activation where you're trying to educate people on cool products to use, try, and buy. Flagship events. Moves Magazine is a magazine that was initially geared towards professional athletes and the lifestyles that they lead. It would host a Tuesday or Wednesday kickoff week the week of parties, the week during Super Bowl, starts with NFL Media Day, which this year is going to be on a Monday night at 5 o'clock, prime time. So it starts off on Monday, the Monday before Super Bowl Sunday, and literally lasts for a week. In Moves Magazine, they kind of did, made a couple missteps. Uh, they hosted a horrible party at Hotel Valley Ho, and this year, I bet that flagship franchise party dies. 12th annual ESPN party. It's at a secret location. It's at Fort Mason. 
Fort Mason uh, Herbs Pavilion, which is going to be amazing. And it's Friday, and that's super similar to the Guardsman Tree Lot Party, which I started studying back in September. There's a tweet uh, that's linked. You guys don't care. You just want to know the location. Friday, and then super secret ESPN VIP party is at the Grand on Saturday. Now, these types of things uh, are super similar to what happened last year at the Westin Hotel and at Westworld in Phoenix, which the Super Bowl is in Glendale. ESPN Friday, ESPN VIP Saturday. Leather and Lace Party. That party is at City View in Metreon. It's above actually a movie theater. And it's, I think it's on the fifth floor. City View, Metreon. Leather and Laces is also always the Friday before Super Bowl Sunday. So it, it's right in a prime time slot uh, during Super Bowl party week. Ditka and Jaws. By Ditka, of course, it's Mike Ditka, Go Bears, and uh, Ron Jaworski. So uh, Ditka and Jaws is a party that's now, I think it's in its seventh year, but it's in its second year of supporting NFL alumni. And if you look at the consumer advocacy truth of helping NFL alums and also youth at risk, this party is going to be at 620 Jones on Thursday. It's 7 to 10. And just to even get an invite, you have to get a secret code just to plop down the 1500 bucks for entrance. I know. But it goes towards a great cause. Huge flagship party is the Maxim Magazine party. Maxim Magazine party is on Saturday. Uh, the ratios of Guy to Girls is pretty good. It's probably the best, most best ratios. Most of the parties end up being very guy heavy. So if you're a guy and you're just rolling in with guys, um, it's a lot harder to gain entrance. And the ratio's always messed up. It's really strange. It feels like a technology event where the attendees are all dudes. And that's the, the scope of it. This year it's at Treasure Island. Burr, it's gonna be freezing. One thing about uh, predicting locations and venues of parties is that there's a limited number of premium spots. And Maxim Magazine, I'm surprised, did not hold it at San Francisco Giants Stadium, inside the stadium itself. Treasure Island is four miles away from city center, but it's slightly over a half of a bridge. And the way the wind blows in Treasure Island, it's freezing. So if you're doing maximum Saturday night, that's really the only party that you're going to do. And driving to it's awkward, busing there, there's no subway. Um, I don't know if they're going to do shuttles. I just don't know. I'm probably going to skip that one, even though it'll be a great party. Ratios. Playboy. The Playboy party in... It's going to be this year in the parking lot parking lot A for San Francisco Giants. I have mixed feelings about this event, not because it's not going to be a great event. I have mixed feelings because I just have mixed feelings about it. Uh, maybe I've been to too many that are okay. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. So. Those are some of the flagship parties. The other flagship parties are where you have to just RSVP via email and do a cell confirmation with government ID. What they're looking for and what they're screening for is there's going to be the type of celebrities that are there that are going to want a non-crossover to a certain type of certain very specific guest. So you actually have to be admitted one person, one piece of government identity to see if you're not blacklisted by some random celebrity that's going to be there. I know. So it's it's amazingly deep and well underwritten party guest lists. That's kind of some behind the scenes on the host side, on our side of it. Hosting events obviously helps you get into events. Hosting events definitely gets you into events. Um, that's just part of the algorithm for a little bit of hosting, 
a little bit of enthusiasm for gate crashing, and also being comfortable while being put on the wait list for admittance. And also how you show up, uh, if you're showing up decently well dressed, uh, super well dressed, and depending on who is walking and wrangling you in. And if it's just all heavy set bean counter looking people, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Uh, if you're young and horribly California dressed, yeah, good luck with that. Um, there's definitely a right way to go about being dressed and showing up and wrangling yourself in through the door. There are four hotels almost in a row in San Francisco where nearly all the action is going to take place. St. Regis is hosting NFL owners. Don't wait in the lobby. All the owners go in through the just they're not going through the lobby plus there's a ton of security so don't even lobby lobby con lobby network just south of it is hotel w where a ton of activities are going to be uh getting hosted and just north of it and across the street from it are two westons one of weston hotel just got renamed the park weston park something and then there's the palace hotel Disclosure, I benefit from SPG, Star Preferred Gifts Properties, but that's the intel on the epicenter, which is right next to Moscone. This year's Wild Horse Pass Resort, the team hotel for the New England Patriots, will probably be the San Mateo Maria. Teams pick based on how they travel, uh, proximity to the stadium that they're playing in, and a whole host of other factors. But Wild Horse Pass last year was the team hotel for the Patriots where they had an after party that actually had no security. You just walked in. Um, it was in a crappy little lobby bar. And I mean, if you knew the team hotel location, you could go. This year, the San Mateo Maria. I also study saw Drew Brees took a bunch of courses at Stanford Business School and all of that business school knowledge you can get over YouTube. You could get over just Googling uh, strategic management 353, hashtag Stram GT 353, or an, a class on entrepreneurship, uh, technology entrepreneurship specifically, ENGR 145. So I pay attention to random things. Uh, I enjoy parties and it was great meeting you via this one-way interaction. Uh, I'll sell you a Super Bowl list for 800 bucks with entrance, or if you click like and reach out to me via email or text, uh, I'll waive the 800. I know, crazy awesome deal, isn't it?